Hey everybody, how are you? It's Chris Stipes here in the Fox 26 newsroom. It is 30 minutes to air. That means it is 4.30. The countdown is on to our 5 o'clock newscast. I am joined by our fantastic photographer, Matt Mateka. Matt, say hi to everybody. <laughs> What, you don't want to talk on camera? Matt and I have uh, an extensive history together. Matt and I spent Hurricane Ike um, ho holding one another in a <laughs> in an apartment complex parking lot. No, that didn't happen. Well, then go ahead and talk. What did happen? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I've embarrassed, I've embarrassed Matt. We did. When Hurricane Ike was hitting, Matt and I were standing in downtown Houston at the Brennan's fire. And when everything le uh, left, the fire departments and everybody left, uh, Matt and I were in a parking garage, an apartment complex, waiting the storm out holding one another. I'm kidding. It was all about survival. Uh, if you don't know how this works, this is a webcast on uh, myfoxhouston.com, myfoxhoustonlive.com. We appreciate you stopping by, certainly. Uh, we're going to just kind of meander through the newsroom. This is completely unscripted. We don't know what's going to happen. We do know we are going to talk to a lot of the behind-the-scenes folks here at Fox 26 as we get ready for the 5 o'clock newscast. I'll be anchoring today with Katie McCall, the lovely Katie McCall, at 5 and 9 o'clock. Don and Melinda have the night off, and then we'll also talk to the reporters via FaceTime and on the iPad and whatnot that are out in the field getting their stories ready. Um, me, I apologize if I look a little sleepy. I'm still a little jet-lagged. I just got back from Germany. I was there for the last week covering the uh, Astrodome fact-finding mission with Harris County officials there with Judge Ed Emmett. Uh, that was very exciting. At the same time, uh, I, I'm a little sleepy. I had yesterday off. I got back Wednesday night, but uh, the time changed. You know, there's seven hours ahead in Germany. So when I got there, I was up for 38 straight hours, which was fantastic. But we worked hard. Uh, hopefully did some some good stories. Now we're back in Houston getting ready for the, uh, the shows tonight. Uh, let us start with Andrea Watkins. Uh, Pearl, do we have Andrea on the here. FaceTime? Here's Andrea. Andrea is actually in Brenham at the Bluebell facilities covering the latest on the Bluebell situation. So Andrea, we had the FDA report come out yesterday that said that there was listeria at Bluebell uh, maybe a little earlier than we originally thought. What's the update today? What are you working on? Well, the, yes, it came out yesterday with this new information that they knew about listeria contamination in uh, 2013 and that according to the FDA, the cleaning processing, the manufacturing process was not cleaned up well enough to get rid of this listeria problem. But part, part of, of yesterday's news was Bluebell went suddenly from hoping to be back in production in a few weeks to maybe being back in production in a few months or several months. That is a big, big deal uh, because the retooling, the um, renovating the, their plants in multiple places need is much more extensive than anybody thought. So now Bluebell is having to reevaluate everything that it's been doing so far, and that includes employee pay. And so right now they're paying everybody as full-time workers. Uh oh, what do you got going on there? A little uh, fire truck coming through or an ambulance. All right, we got a little. <laughs> Tell Dave Lanier thank you for shooting the uh, the ambulance. Okay, p pick it up where, pick it up where. Well, let me ask you this, Andrea. Uh, I mean. I don't know who you've spoken to, but man, this is major in terms of the, the damage that could be done to the Bluebell brand. If they're off the shelves for months, you know, people start to go elsewhere for their ice cream needs. And, you know, they've got to be very concerned about moving forward with their right. company. Well, I'll tell you what, our mission today was to talk to people in the community and find out how they were feeling about it. And I'll tell you, um, you know, Privately, people that didn't want to go on camera would tell me that they're kind of worried that people didn't realize how how serious it was. Um, but then there are other just really, really strong supporters. As we all know, Bluebell has tons of uh, customer loyalty, and, and especially here in this town, there is loyalty. And we went to one of the main ice cream parlors in town, um, and you know their ice cream shelf is empty. And I said, have you ever considered putting some other ice cream in there until Bluebell is back on the shelf? And she said, absolutely not. So they has told me, you know, they know they're taking a hit business-wise, but they're not going to replace Bluebell ice cream with any other ice cream. They're sticking it out. They're going to show, um, you know, support for Bluebell. But it is concerning that it's going to be several months now before the uh, ice cream production is back on track and it is 
concerning for the people who are employed by Bluebell to know that Bluebell might have to reevaluate whether or not it's able to keep everybody on, both here in Brenham and in the other states where it has plants, which we know is Oklahoma and Alabama and a few other states. Chris. A lot of implications, certainly. Okay, Andrea, thank you. We look forward to your report. That's Andrea Watkins uh, in Brenham. Matt, stay there. I'm going to walk around and talk to Aaron. And uh, Aaron is on our assignment desk, and it has been a violent day in the city of Houston. Very sad story this morning. The owner of Stewart Cadillac in downtown Houston was murdered uh, either late last night or early this morning, Aaron. Yeah, uh, we just got an update from uh, Christine Galvan and HPD. Both of his press releases arrived at the same time. Galvan's in her web story. She, I don't know if you're going to be talking to her later on. Uh, but yeah, Joseph Stewart, about 11.30 p.m. last night, was coming home, um, uh, walked in his garage, and was apparently shot about four times. Um, and there was a previous incident, to my understanding, a previous incident perhaps involving the same three men uh, maybe some weeks back. I'm not exact certain on the, on the yeah, details. Yeah, he had filed a report about a robbery or mm -hmm. attempted robbery at the same location about two weeks ago. Um, after the, and I guess he told police uh, his surveillance system was broken after that initial attack. So there's some stuff that's still under investigation. Um, so that's the latest to that one. We also had a couple of other scenes last night. Um, well, actually, this morning, two scenes. Um, one of them, about 8.20 this morning, there was a, a woman found shot to death in her home in southeast Houston at the 5600 block of Bell Neath. Um, and then there was a body of a female found about 20 minutes later, 8.47, a security guard walking between two chemical plants off of uh, Sheldon Road found the body of a, a female. A cause of death is pending in that. So kind of a violent day this morning. All day today. Well, it was interesting too. I was looking on social media. The people, uh, I don't know if you remember, probably about a month or two ago, there was a young man murdered over in the Montrose, and it led to a few protests and rallies saying, We want more patrols and more police presence. Um, and, and, I saw some of that same chatter today after Mr. Stewart was murdered. You know, oh, here we go again in the Montrose. And, uh, you know, I heard uh, sound bites. Go ahead, Aaron. I, Aaron's working our assignment desk. I know he's got to get back to work. He's the kind of the lifeline for everybody, uh, all the stories that come through the newsroom. Uh, yeah, let's go over here. Uh, Ashley Johnson, speaking of violence, hate to be a Debbie Downer here, but, it, it, you know, it's the world we live in these days. There was an incident in California recently with a teenage girl who was followed home from school. Matt, let's go this way and talk to Ashley. She was followed home from school, and a, a man forced his way inside of her home and attacked her. Now, she survived. She was able to fight him off. But Ashley here is wearing her athletic gear. I know, I'm not usually caught in the newsroom looking like I'm nope. about to work out. <laughs> you, just, you just got back doing a little Krav Maga. You were doing a teen self-defense class, right? Yes, it's the fighting style that the Israeli army uses. And so now people take classes in it to learn self-defense. They teach men, women, young, old. And they teach you how to defend yourself, whether you're in a violent situation and the attacker is just coming up behind you, or even if the attacker has, say, a gun on them. Well, and they're simple skills that can really save somebody's life did, did you yes. notice was it was it all women there or was it is it for men or for young well, young people? Luckily, I got a one-on-one -on -one lesson right okay. now. But right. Uh, or later tonight, they actually have teens, uh, well, preteens, mm -hmm. nine to twelve-year-olds oh, that wow. come in. So you could sign your kids up for it. But one thing I want to show you, Chris, they say you know actually people think making a lot of noise makes a difference. But they say if a person comes up and sees that you're being attacked, they're more likely to take out their cell phone and call the police than actually come up and push that person off of okay. you. So you're going to want to learn how to actually defend yourself. You want to make sure that you have your feet steady, you have a strong base, you want to shake them off, kick them in the groin, hit them in the groin, and then turn around. There are ways you can maneuver yourself that it's all about the angle in which you hit someone that they'll have to drop their arm and you can actually like kick them in well, the that's, uh, face or whatever. So that's why it's so <laughs> vital though to, to take a class like that because to, to, to you want to make it where it's just your reaction to do that. You exactly. know what I mean? So you need to do it repeatedly as opposed to doing it for the first time in that situation. I'm exhausted. Like, I actually was sweating out my hair, and we were just doing it for 45 minutes. So it takes a lot of time to even practice these techniques to get them down. You know, we pr probably went over it about a good four to five times for every exercise that we were learning. Now, yeah, I mean, you're not a teenager, but <laughs> you're, you're a woman. Yeah. Do you, you know, and, and I think women maybe need to be a little bit more careful than men because maybe, you know, you're, oh, you're yeah. more of a target. D does that go through your mind when you're just out and about, and especially at night? Do you think about that kind of stuff? It constantly go goes through my mind. And one of the things they emphasize is just knowing your environment. Always, you know, not being so ingrained in your cell phone. When you get out the car, like I live in an apartment complex and I'm walking in, 
in by myself at night, making sure that I'm aware of my surroundings. So if something is going on, you know, I'm not distracted and, and, and I can respond. Well, it's interesting what you said. How many people walk around <laughs> these days oh, like yeah, this? You're more into your phone, you're, you're texting. You're, you're not like, looking up yeah, and that, I'm, I'm sure no, that exactly. just makes you an easy target. And my mom used to always say, pay attention to your surroundings, mm -hmm. pay attention. But now, especially being older and coming in sometimes late at night, I put my cell phone down and I walk into my apartment yeah. and I, I check and make sure nothing seems out of the ordinary or also not having a pattern. If people know yeah. that you leave at the same time every day, you actually make yourself a target for yeah. someone who could be following you. Now you, you go through the whole uh, thing? Oh yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna see it, we're gonna see it yeah, at five o'clock. I'd just, make you really do it right now. <laughs> I just pulled the muscle ham here, come on. You want me? Okay, Chris, I'm making you a little... It's not clicking in. Does it, is the audio working? Is the audio working? I just broke the microphone, April. Did you see that? The, the bottom fell out. Where'd you get this thing? We need some duct tape stat. Come on, is it working? There's, there's, did you see the microphone break? I'm going to give you the microphone in a minute. This is Katie McCall. And uh, no, go to work. You, got, you wanna, Okay, come on. That happened earlier today. The same thing happened earlier, except it was during the new newscast. She just yelled, it's, it's still working. The whole thing, it just, yeah. well, it doesn't it click in, man. It's it. it just completely fell out. Like, wow. Man, technical issues, we so, deal with it. Yeah, it was really silly um, looking. We had somebody, like, kneeling below me, going like this. To, it was kind of obscene in. looking, like it was not a PG-rated <laughs> thing. So. Sometimes you just got to plug it back in. I'm going to come give it to you in a minute. I'm going to go talk yeah, to John yeah. first. Katie's going to take over, because i got to remember, we're counting down to the 5 o'clock newscast. It's 4.41. Remember, if you're watching online, there's like a 45-second minute-long delay. There's Mike Maisel. Mike, say hi. Mike's getting the newscast ready. He's one of our fantastic editors. Here's John Dawson. One of our fantastic meteorologists, he is in tonight with Katie and I. John, I'll be honest, I'm feeling a little tired. I'm a little drained. I feel... Uh, you look tired. You look drained. I'm trying to g gather up the energy. So, did you miss me? I was in Germany for a week. I'm totally back. Totally, I missed you. I don't believe you for a did, second. Did you tell... No, I really, I did. Did you tell um, folks that all about... Uh, I haven't been able to watch you know what was everything. Really, no, you know what was Have really funny? Have you been funny. telling people? So, I get in the cabin. That you a lot went of, to Germany? You were yeah, gone. I mentioned, you and Ed Emmett. I mean, yeah, me and Ed Edmund went to Germany, but it was really funny because... Tropical paradise. I was under the impression that more people spoke English, and I'm like, why are all these people speaking German? <laughs> We're in Germany. Right. But it was really funny because listen to what the cab driver says to me. Now, he spoke pretty good English, but when I told him, oh, I was from Houston, Texas, first thing he goes, he goes, Houston, we have a problem. And then, ah! and then he goes, is it true you can shoot somebody if you don't like them? <laughs> I said, well, not quite like that. I said, if they're stealing from you, if they break into your home, then you can shoot them. He goes, because I had a couple from Houston, or from, from Texas, he says, he's, they said that you can shoot people on their bikes. Is that true? Can I, can I, can I ask you to stop doing your German accent? Because it's, <laughs> it's really not working that's very how he well. I, no, no, he didn't. <laughs> I, I, let me just tell you, he did not sound like that. But isn't that funny, though, that that's what people think about Texas. They oh, think, totally. They yeah. think we can all yeah. shoot each other. Anyway. Totally. Uh, what do you, you and, gotta, we, and we have a lot of horses. Sometimes we ride them. You know, <laughs> kind of a deal. What happened to your TV here? Your giant... You know, if you were watching this same program yesterday at this same time, I was not. That computer uh, was fighting us. Okay. And uh, Dr. Jim and I were both operating it as Don Teague was interviewing and discussing. Uh, it once again is having uh, a little bit of issues. Uh, so it has since been fixed, though, no? Or it's, well, it's, we'll find out here in a minute. I'm, looks like it's I'm hoping, you'll, I'm hoping you'll go away here in a minute <laughs> so that we won't know if, uh, if it's going to be. Uh, but we're, we, we're, we're restarting a computer, but that's okay. That we got plenty of other computers to play with around you don't need here. A computer. You got a computer uh, it's right all here. It's right a wealth upstairs, of knowledge right? in your head. All right. uh, yeah, that's what we need to look at. Let's go over to there. You were just in the right spot there, man. Let's yeah, take a look. Rain, we looks got, like on the we west got side. a lot of rain out in uh, other parts of the the state of Texas, uh, not what we're dealing with, those red boxes indicating tornado watches that are in effect. Uh, and then you've also got uh, some other uh, uh, stronger storms out ahead of those tornado watches uh, that could be impacting us a little bit later on this evening. So we're going to keep a deep, decent chance of rain in the forecast for tonight, uh, looking for about a 40% chance of rain in the forecast uh, for this evening. We're going to decrease that during the day tomorrow. Uh, in the seven-day forecast, which I'm not going to show you now, no, I'm going to... Oh, Hang on. Oh, see, that's not good. <laughs> it's not good. 
I thought that would be good because you can log in now. See, here's here. I'll, let me. T I'll tell you the the problem. Uh, it's a dual monitor system, right? If y we got two monitors that go to the same computer, and for whatever reason they decided to switch who does what, okay. and so the one that usually does there is now there, and the other one is there, and it's over there, and it all has to do with those little boxes. I'm concerned the boss started walking this way. I know. I know exactly. I think he's upset all, with you. We're getting it all fixed. We're getting it all worked out, right? We're all tender. Figure control. it out. I'm gonna go. Go go head him uh, off. Go head him off and make it up. No, I'm gonna go give the microphone to Katie because I gotta, I gotta get ready There's for the broadcast. It. No, I got I gotta get ready for the five o'clock show. Gotta put my last minute makeup on and get a glass of water. Katie McCall, don't break the microphone. You ready to go? Have you read the show? You're good to go. A little bit of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little That's bit of it. Relatively <laughs> familiar, familiar enough. All right, cool. Uh, no? I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go do what I do yeah. before the show. Take. All right, Hillary Whittier, come on down. I want to talk about her uh, special, by the way. She's doing yeah. her May Sweeps team. I'm excited about this story, actually. This is pretty cool. And Hillary's actually here in the building. And really quickly, let me tell deal. you know what I did for the first time today. What's that, Chris? Uh, in 18 months, I went to the gym and I lifted weights. Can you Jeez. tell? I'm swollen. Should, we, should we compare? I'm going to the like, beach. Got, no, I don't want to use her. Who's got more definition? Clearly. All right, Hillary Whittier. Hey. So you're doing a really interesting story about vanity and what drives us to these crazy diets as a culture, right? Pretty much. I mean, every summer, us women, we, I, I don't know about you, Katie, but I struggle with the thought of, am I thin enough for a bathing suit? Do you look good enough? And so I just thought, why not do a series on that or a story on that? And so we interviewed a couple health experts and really kind of got to the bottom of um, how important self-esteem is when trying on any clothes whether it's a bathing suit or not but check this out okay bathing suits by the way this is in <sighs> early 1900s Can we bring those back like that would be Look awesome how comfortable that looks like yeah. i would straight up love to wear that not very streamlined for the competitive swimmer but <laughs> there's a lot of clothes. flattering v flattering in terms of you don't have to worry what you ate for lunch that day here's yeah. today and you know what kind of pressure is that and obviously that's yeah. photoshop too and and she's gorgeous but it's like what normal woman can look like that and say have pizza on a Saturday night? I don't yeah, want to give you up. You can't pizza. have the pizza and do that. You can only yeah. have one or the other. But you can have the pizza and do that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we're just kind of going through uh, bathing suits throughout the years. And I start with the 1800s and bathing suits and how they looked back then. And you couldn't even show your ankles back then. You had to have everything covered. Now it's like the more you show, the harder you are. So right. um, our perspective has changed so much. What I want to know is why is the lighting in, and this is for you stores, why is the lighting in every department store where they sell the bathing suits? I swear in just that department, yep. it's the worst lighting in the history of the world. I can't, oh, I'm sure. I mean, every time Isn't you as well, I, I go in to try an outfit on and oh my God, sell you light, no, you know, and yeah. it's just uh, this fluorescent lighting. I don't get that. It's cruel. It's very cruel. I do notice some of the higher end stores are specializing more in lighting because yeah. that's more important to them, which makes sense. I mean, that should be part of the budget is, is lighting. But yeah, if it looks good on me, I'm going to buy it. I mean, Agreed. that's that's the deal. Yeah. So you also talk about some, some trends in diet and all these gizmos, right? Yeah, and I interviewed a bunch of people on the street, too, just asking, hey, how do you feel around this time? And, and they're like, oh, yeah, we've tried the liquid diet. We've tried the only – what was – one girl said she did sugar-free jello for like a week. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. And she didn't have to go to the hospital or anything. I guess your body can adjust anything for a week, I suppose. Um, but I did interview kind of this cool company called, um, gosh, what is it called? Uh, Hypoxia. I forget because it's such an odd name. But they have, yeah, these kind of space, spaceship-looking gizmos that are supposed to tone your body. And, and it's interesting because it's really like science meets health fat, I suppose. Okay, they have one of those on Kirby, and I've seen the sign, and I was always wondering what do they do in that place? It looks very weird. Yeah, yeah. And so you go in as a normal sized person and then you come out looking like Giselle Bunchen or? Uh, I think that's always the dream. But yeah, uh, that was the place we went. And we interviewed the lady and saw the gizmos. Um, it's like this four week process. But I did see before and after pictures and they were pretty legit. So um, I think it, there's a fine line between fad and weird diets and new age technology that actually does work. Yeah, like remember those things that had like a belt and they would just flap on people? Yes, I referenced and it, that. Yeah, I was like, is this the old 50s like, you know, butt jiggler <laughs> that we saw back then? Um, in some ways, yes, but I do think we can identify how to 
focus on certain areas of the body a little bit more. Can you find out if the cellulite cream that they sell really does reduce cellulite or if it's just a big lie? I mean, just, just if I put in like a request. I'll do, I'll do my best. Uh, I think I'm an idiot that problem. buys that stuff thinking it works. Me too. 2 a.m. infomercial. Boom. I'm on it. I will straight up call them. So. I get mine at Target. I'm a little, mm. a little cheaper, That's you know, good. the Target kind. Immediate fix, because I have to wait my, for mine stuff to come in the mail. You get it, and you're like, oh, what a waste. So what other diets did you look at? Any, any specific ones that people would recognize, or do you not want to give too much away? Well, we were focusing mostly on liquid diets, because um, so many women, two weeks, even 21-day mm. cleanse diets, where they're doing nothing but liquids, and the health expert I interviewed was like, yeah, you'll lose some water weight for a while, but the second you start eating, it comes back on. So I think that's the main issue here is that in this body image culture where we're supposed to be perfect, finding perfection is much more hurtful long term than just kind of accepting who you are. So it's eat well and exercise and nothing. Yes. It's not going to be easy. You got to do the work. A pizza here and there. A Bodies like Chris there. Stipes don't <laughs> just happen, people. I mean, they That's don't true. just happen. That's true. All right, Hillary Whittier, thank you. So what, when is this story oh, airing? This airs Tuesday night at 9 o'clock. So Tuesday night at nine. Yep, it'll right. be good. Watch for Hillary. And what's it called? Do we have a name for it? Uh, no, but you should make one for me, so I don't okay. have to come up with one. That's I put it on my list. Okay. Thank you so much. That's a great story. Very interesting. I'm not sure where we're headed next. I'm gonna wander around here and see who is. Uh, Hi. Hello. Oh, Carolyn, you go. Okay. So, Matt, tell us what's going on. Well, for 9 o'clock, Katie, we've got actually got a pretty interesting story. You know, we all want to be happy, right? Well, yeah. I think so. Well, uh, some Ooh. researchers at uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, found out that uh, sex, more sex, may not be the uh, right way to go, though, believe it or not. Are you asking all men to not watch the 9 o'clock news tonight, or <laughs> is that... Um, not seeing the approach here, well, Matt. We we may need to talk about this. Well, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the good news. It's not. They need to do a little bit more research on this, but there's actually maybe an explanation as to why this uh, why more sex may not be making couples happy. Uh, I'm intrigued. You, you should be. Um, so, uh, like I said. Don't worry, more research needs to be done, but we'll, uh, we'll tell you why researchers came to this conclusion and why uh, it, w there may be some hope here. So Okay, so men send all of your hate mail to me and do not set off a bomb underneath his car for making this announcement. It is not your fault <laughs> that the researchers are saying this, right? Um, well... <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> it should be an interesting story, though, so I hope uh, everyone tunes in. Yeah, that's interesting stuff. All right, Matt, thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. That's for the 9 o'clock. Let's talk to Carolina here. Hey, girlfriend. Hey. Okay, this is such a sad story. It is a very tragic story, and this is also another 9 o'clock story. It's Randy Wallace's story. Last night he told us about this baby, six-month-old baby, that died while in CPS custody. We put it up on Facebook, and it is going viral. I mean, people are asking questions like, how in the world does a baby die under child protective services? They're supposed to protect these kids. So now everybody's asking, what was this little accident that happened because he died from trauma? So... Um, He's trying to get to the bottom of it now, but the medical examiner is still waiting to release the autopsy results, so we don't really know much. But well, Randy's... I'm sorry. What were the natures, nature of the injuries? Remind us the, the severity, because this was not something that just would happen to a child who fell. I mean, it's trauma like that doesn't just happen. Let me put it like this. Randy told me earlier today that the mom and the attorneys told him that doctors said they put the baby on life support so they can keep the organs, you know, active in order to donate them to other babies, you know, because they potentially save another baby's life. Unfortunately, the, the, the organs were no good because they were so damaged from the trauma. So this could be from previous abuse before that child was taken into custody. We don't know enough about this yet, right? Or yeah, was the child healthy when the child was put into CPS custody or was the child taken because that child had been injured? According to the mom, she had just gone to visit them the week before and everybody was fine because mm -hmm. she has three kids that are in CPS. So I don't know. I mean, it seems very fishy, but again, we don't know everything. So it seems someone may have harmed this child once the mother turned the child over to CPS. Mm -hmm. 
You know, a doctor said this one time, and, and I'll never forget it. He said it's very hard to break a baby. We always think of babies as being very fragile and very delicate, but the human body is really made very, very well. We're made for survival. So even if a baby falls, you know, you won't have systemic injury like what you're describing right. from just some simple things. So there must be a bigger explanation. Right, and that's what we're hoping for. And everybody on our Facebook page is demanding some sort of answer. So. That is so sad. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. And we'll certainly look forward to Randy's report tonight at 9 o'clock. Is that right? Yep. Okay, it looks like it's time for me to start heading into the studio. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I posted your Facebook thing, by the way. Oh, thanks. Did it, had it not done it? Uh, no, I don't know why, but it's... Huh. Yeah, so. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right. So come on over. We're going to head toward the studio because we have two more minutes of 30 minutes to air. And then the newscast starts at 5 o'clock, and it's going to be Chris Stipes, the lovely and talented John Dawson, and yours truly today. We've got a lot of news going on, both national and local, to bring you. And, of course, a very active system, right, John Dawson? Especially this time of year. Totally. Getting started early. The weather gods uh, ha are mixing it up for us. So John Dawson is going to tell you about this. I'm crossing my fingers for no hurricanes. And I know Phil is too, right? Yes. No Especially hurricanes. no hurricanes. We got to do our no hurricane dance because we've got already an active system. I didn't know that. We do, yes. And it's, our, it's only May, which is early, 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 as you know. And that's a long season. It goes all the way till October, folks. We'll be at the stand spot. Okay. All right. I've got one more minute of this uh, 30 minutes to air thing. So this is where I sit. And I'm going to get mic'd up here so they can hear what I'm saying. Thank you, Matt, for turning around. i got to do something with this that you don't want to see. So you can see one of our live shots there. And that, that's going to be the scene that you're looking at. Um, that, I believe, is the homicide that happened last night involving the um, owner of a Cadillac dealership who was shot. It's a horrible story. You me out here. Uh, Gal Bond's live shot is in jeopardy, or is that it right here? That, that looks like it. That's going to be the, the Cadillac yeah. homicide. Yeah, so that guy had actually, that guy had actually been robbed yeah. two weeks ago by three guys and, and was able to get away unharmed. But it turns out, it, you know, it's possible that the same people came back and got him this time. One of the detectives said this morning that he thought it was just incredibly coincidental that it happened that way. Um, we should be done. I we were done at 56. 57. I'm not even on. I'm not even on. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, he was like, they don't tell me when I'm going on, man, fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 